edition of Talking Arts and Entertainment. I'm Vic Folliot. Ernie Kaula is our special guest today with his quartet. We'll be playing you some music from his uh, CD that he had out about uh, 2006, although he'll tell us as we move forward that uh, they'll be hopefully working on a new CD in the not-too-distant future. And right off the bat, we had an early in earlier on this week... Uh, he had a couple of days growth beard, and there was a reason for that. And uh, that is because you've been out uh, on a fishing expedition. Just back from six days fly fishing in Quebec, yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk a bit about that. Is, is that, I mean, I guess that's fairly well known by folks that follow you. And I guess so, yeah. I, I, I compete in fly fishing championships around Canada, and, uh, and I've been on the Canadian uh, national team uh, for the Worlds and the Commonwealths uh, uh, one, t one time each. Wow. Yeah. So that must be a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to say that must be unbelievable, and you got a great place to practice here. <laughs> oh, great, great place to practice right here on the Grand River. Exactly. So, Ernie Collin, our, our jazz. Now, uh, you've got different kind of configurations that you you can offer because you do everything from the club thing to weddings to all kinds of different stuff. So, talk a bit about sure. about that. Sure, that's right, yeah. Uh, well, uh, Ernie Collin, jazz uh, is the uh, name of my group, of course, and... and uh, we're versatile in that we uh, can perform as a duo, uh, saxophone and guitar, or saxophone and piano, or we expand to a trio, uh, so we add an up upright bass, um, a stand-up bass, and uh, sometimes we add a, a drummer to make a full quartet, and then sometimes we even perform with um, uh, five or six people total, quintet or sextet. Oh, wow. And it's mostly jazz, or can you do big band stuff when you get into the bigger bigger thing? Or? And, yeah, yeah, the bigger things, we can do some big band stuff, but uh, it's mostly jazz, uh, small group jazz, mm -hmm. um, uh, traditional stuff, uh, Stan Getz, uh, uh, Bossa Nova tributes, uh, um, uh, Zoot Sims, that kind of thing. Um, uh, and, and, yeah, we play for weddings, corporate parties, uh, special occasions, anniversaries. We've even played for somebody's... Uh, uh, for a gentleman's 100th birthday. Oh, wow, that doesn't happen too often, does it? No, it um, doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, Vicky had a spry 87-year-old on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to love it. <laughs> well, let's hear a, a cut. From now, this CD was done, uh, did you say, what, 2006? 2006. Yeah. 2006, yeah. And Out at the Escarpment Sound? Recorded at uh, the wonderful Escarpment Sound studio in uh, Acton, just outside of Acton, on a, a farm property out there, and this is a... It's a fantastic place to record. In fact, uh, uh, the late Stomp and Tom Connors uh, recorded all of his CDs there. Um, it, the ambiance is fantastic. It's a converted stone barn built in the 1850s, and uh, it's just fantastic to record there uh, with all the stone and the wood surroundings. Yeah. Well, let's uh, have a little bossing over then. Sure. And you're listening to uh, Talking Arts and Entertainment. I'm Vic Folliot, and we'll be... Uh, Talking to Ernie for the next, oh, 30 minutes probably and playing some great music for you. Thank you. 
And you're listening to Talking Arts and Entertainment. And we're listening to some uh, great music and uh, having a, a discussion with Ernie Caldwell and then uh, with jazz. And also you're with the uh, Royal City Saxophone Quartet, too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've uh, run the Royal City Saxophone Quartet since uh, 1991. Uh, we're the, probably the longest-running saxophone quartet in Canada. And uh, uh, we've toured all over uh, Canada and the U.S., uh, playing at uh, ragtime and jazz festivals uh, since then. And, and we have four CDs out uh, with the saxophone quartet oh, wow. uh, as well. So. And you, uh, so you do, it's, it's performance. You're, Those you're are there performances. And, yeah. They tend to be concert like concert type things. Yeah. That's right, okay. concert performances. Uh, uh, we have played for special occasions for uh, people's... Uh, um, anniversaries or birthday parties as well, just like a, uh, uh, or weddings, like you would have a string quartet where you have the saxophone quartet instead. It can take the place of a string quartet and then, um, you know, add other types of jazzy type uh, numbers because it's for saxophone players. But yeah, typically 90% uh, um, of our performances are concert performances uh, in, uh, uh, usually in small concert halls. Uh, we've played in larger concert halls. We played in the River Run Center, oh, uh, things like wow. that. Very cool, very cool. So you've been doing music how long? Has it been sort of since you're... Myself? Uh, gosh, uh, <clears throat> my mother had me take piano lessons when I was, uh, I think I was 10 or maybe uh, a little younger than 10 years old. And then when I was 12, uh, in grade 7, I was introduced to the saxophone and, uh, and I just, uh, the piano was history at that point. <laughs> uh, I, I wished I had kept up with it because I would love to play piano better. I can play a few chords here and there. Uh, but uh, uh, no, I really took off on the saxophone and then that developed into a little bit of the clarinet and the flute too because the woodwinds, um, it's a family of instruments that are, uh, your fingerings on those instruments are, are virtually very similar and uh, so it's pretty transferable and it makes you more employable as a musician uh, to play in say pit bands for musicals, mm -hmm. um, in the pit orchestras, uh, if you can double uh, or triple on, uh, uh, you know, both saxophone, uh, double with clarinet and, and triple with flute. Have you done that? Yeah, by the way, I've always, I'm I always have. fascinated because there's some really good, very, very talented people you see up on the stage with uh, Drayton and some of these other things that go That's on. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I haven't played at Drayton, but uh, uh, I did a few uh, pit band uh, uh, stints uh, with musicals uh, down at the Oakville Summer Theater. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, um, for uh, one or two summers, uh, I played for a bunch of shows there, things like Hello, Dolly, and uh, something... Uh, funny happen on the way to the forum things like that and they're good i guess in the sense depending on how long the run is because i know they've got the one that's going on right now down in uh, one of the drayton facilities down in st jacobs and it runs right through till christmas so for a musician, for a musician <laughs> it's, it's almost constant it's, employment it's, it's not bad it's steady full-time employment employment for a musician for sure um uh, to be in a pit orchestra yeah and uh, uh and it's great fun and uh, and you're usually with some great musicians uh uh, that are in there and they they can uh, play the music uh, without uh, uh, without much rehearsal and uh, uh, they're professional musicians yeah that's a very cool kind of a so totally different kind of a, an atmosphere and they're listening to you which sometimes is not the case when you're of course jazz maybe i think a lot of people like they'll go if they're jazz fans they'll go in and they want to listen to it it's as opposed to some of the other stuff where you're just in the way of their drinking. Which is <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so let's have another uh, cut from the uh, CD. The, again, this was back in 2006, and uh, you were saying there's maybe some chances of you going back into a studio in the next little while. We can talk about that in a minute. This uh, CD is called The Autumn Leaves. And Ernie, can you get this? Just call you or contact you if you yeah, have still you copies around? Yeah, or you can buy around? the CD uh, through cdbaby.com uh, or right uh, through our website. 
Uh, you can also uh, uh, download it from various uh, iTunes uh, sources and other um, uh, other legal downloading uh, sources on the internet uh, because we have distri distribution through CD Baby with things like Spotify, um, other uh, other online uh, downloading sources, or you can buy the physical CD through our website erniekalwa.com uh, and uh, or through cdbaby.com. And this is, uh, if you're into that whole girl from Ipanema thing, this is, uh, I love the music of Antonio Carlos Chauvin. And we'll play a little of that right now.
Anyway, you're uh, listening to Talking Arts and uh, Entertainment. I'm Vic Folliot with uh, Ernie Kawa and uh, into jazz, and we've already talked about the saxophone quartet and all that. But I was fascinated by uh, you, what you do for a living, uh, your day job. Tell the folks about that. I don't know. I assume a lot of you, obviously your fans would probably know that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, well, my day job uh, is uh, in database consulting, and uh, I've been doing that for quite a number of years. Uh, uh, do uh, manage and administrate Oracle databases and SQL, Microsoft SQL Server databases also. Um, it comes from my uh, uh, background uh, of um, uh, taking a Bachelor of Mathematics uh, at uh, University of Waterloo, and uh, while I was doing that, I did a minor in music, and... Uh, hmm. Uh, and that was, um, uh, so th I think the math and the music goes uh, hand in hand, uh, in, in my mind anyway, and uh, it must be the same part of the brain or a similar part of the brain uh, that uh, loves the structures of mathematics and also so, uh, the structures of music, too. Um, so yeah, but usually you, when you talk about somebody that's in the maths or sciences, and you look at, a lot of people look at music as a creative kind of thing. So I guess right. if you're learning music and all of that, that would make sense. But if you were one of the guy, uh, kinds of people that would create music just from, you know, being up in the air, drive, or flying between here and Nashville, and something comes and you put it on the uh, uh, napkin that you've got in front of you, it's a right. whole different right. kind it's of a thing. A little different, yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's interesting because both... Um, you know, Vic, both of uh, both math and and music, um, they have uh, structures to them, but they have creativity to them as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, true. Mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, uh, I gravitate to both, but maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the the structural part of both that I uh, that I really love. Um, but uh, I love creating music. And uh, uh, back when I was doing computer programming, uh, that was an art in itself as well, creating uh, computer programs. Uh, and and uh, you had to have a structure in, in, in how to create them, but, uh, uh, but you could be somewhat artistic in, uh, in creating the programs too. So. And you also uh, got heading more in the area of jazz, and you've got a Humber, I believe you were saying. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah after, um, after graduating from University of Waterloo, uh, I wanted to pursue the jazz a little bit more, and uh, so I, was at, um, I went to Humber College uh, and did uh, some of the jazz studies there and uh, studied with some great uh, jazz players. And, uh, uh, and then also after Humber, I, I went on to uh, study with a few... Uh, great uh, players in the United States uh, just for uh, uh, a week or two uh, for a couple of summers and uh, wow. fantastic inspiration and I'm still working on the stuff that they uh, loaded me up with <laughs> <laughs> well let's uh, have another uh, cut from your uh, CD from back in uh, 2006 the autumn leaves and uh, this is Ernie Kawa quartet this time round as opposed to the other <laughs>
Well, we're talking art and uh, entertainment and uh, fly fishing, uh, or at least we're about to, um, because uh, <laughs> Ernie has uh, many interests, but we're finding as, as we go through this that there's a lot of stuff that kind of all makes sense. So sure. we've talked about the, the jazz part of your life and the, uh, also the whole uh, Oracle, Microsoft, all that stuff part of your life, but you're also very much involved as a competitive angler and this is not just fly fishing on the Grand. You're you're competing internationally uh, in different environments too. Right, and on lakes too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, uh, um, yeah, and not not just competitively. Uh, the competitive fly fishing is just something that uh, uh, that I I got into back in 2004, a couple of years after I got into fly fishing, um, and. and uh, uh, so, but I love fly fishing recreationally, uh, mm -hmm. of course, too. Um, so, but yeah, the the, uh, the the fly fishing as well. Uh, we were talking uh, uh, while the music was playing um, about uh, some of the similarities in, in uh, music having structures and uh, and and art and creativity to it, and uh, there's a similarity there with the fly fishing. That, uh, that there's uh, structures uh, of uh, patterns of uh, the flies that we tie for fly fishing uh, because the, every fly has a recipe of the various materials that you use to create that fly. And, uh, and yet then there's, uh, then there's also the art of, uh, of creating the fly itself uh, and, and it can be a very artistic um, uh, um, thing that you've produced, mm -hmm. uh, a work of art in the fly itself, but then also how to present that fly to the fish. There's an art in, involved in that and yet there's a structure to it too. Uh, in in the structure of uh, of of your casting motion, ca uh, casting the fly rod, um, uh, or casting the fly with the fly rod, and um, well, you were saying there was three three flies, different depths, and yeah, and yeah. on lakes uh, especially, we we fish with three flies on a single line, yeah. uh, 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 a single fly line and leader, and uh, because we're trying to probe the depths. Of the of the lake water uh, for where the trout, if it's trout we're fishing for, let's say, uh, which is most of the time, um, uh, we're we're trying to probe the depths and see what level uh, the trout are taking the flies at, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we'll use uh, if, and with so many combinations we can produce uh, of of uh, uh, how many you know thousands of fly patterns there are, and uh, and combining those in three choices uh, a choice of three flies that you can put on your line mm -hmm. um, for the uh, for the fish to take of course we fish for all kinds of species besides trout I love uh, fly fishing for carp especially and uh, and bass and uh, uh, gar pike and uh, uh, I'm going to Texas very shortly to fish for redfish and oh, wow. uh, so fly <laughs> fishing as well as music can take you all around the world uh, to fish for various species mm -hmm. uh, in, ver in diff different environments, just like music can take you to different, different types of festivals, different types of different genres of music. We were also talking again while the music was playing uh, about this whole thing with, uh, with uh, simple uh, versus very complex. And jazz has a tendency, especially somebody that's maybe not a real jazz, traditional jazz fan who takes a look at something where they go into a 10 minute break on all kinds of different things that are uh, uh, which is similar to what what you can do from a fishing standpoint sometimes simple is better in that area as well as well that's right I I, I, I come back to uh, um, one of our mentors that uh, we had as a fishing guide in Scotland in uh, when I was competing at the Commonwealth in 2009 uh, on the island of Isla where Bomore makes their uh, Scotch whiskey, which tastes great, by the way. Uh, <laughs> as an aside. <laughs> yeah, as an aside. Um, but uh, the uh, his uh, he really stressed the phrase "less is more," and uh, and that really hit me because uh, 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 he was applying it to um, the tying of flies, where uh, a lot of people tie flies with too many materials in mm -hmm. them, uh, or or too many wraps of materials. And uh, uh, and so it'll make the fly more attractive to the trout if the fly is more sparse, uh, sparsely tied um, with the materials. And but this also applies. Uh, uh, after he said that to me, uh, I realized that it also applies very much to music, and uh, especially as a jazz musician, uh, there are so many jazz players. Um, 
uh, usually younger ones, usually uh, uh, full of uh, vim and vigor, mm -hmm. uh, who are playing a lot of notes. And, uh, and I'm constantly, as I, as I get a little bit older, um, uh, I'm constantly trying to say more by playing fewer notes. So less is more. Yeah, all ties together. It sure does. And we'll play one more song and wind her down, and we'll have to have you back again. You're working on a new. Uh, you will be working on a new uh, project in the next little while. We're hoping to pull together a new CD uh, fairly soon. Uh, we've had so many people encourage us to uh, to produce something new, and uh, we will definitely do that in the near future. All right, Kala, thanks very much. Enjoy Thank it. You. Thank you, Vic. It's my pleasure. Thank you. 